What's up, everybody? Uche Waneri, your observant lineman here. <sighs> you know, I really didn't want to make this kind of video. I really did not want to make this kind of video uh, because I am an emotional person. I am a passionate person uh, when it comes to uh, people being recognized when they do something or when they've accomplished things and they're legitimate and they have real merit and uh, there's just no, you know, there's not a fair recognition for a person who has done something or done some things uh, that are uh, definitely noteworthy and definitely uh, should be considered uh, an accomplishment for them. I didn't want to make this kind of video, but I'm making this kind of video because I'm fucking pissed off now. I was irritated before. I was just, I was annoyed before that. Now I'm pissed off. Eric Bieniemy, the offense coordinator for the Kansas City Chiefs, Super Bowl championship, Kansas City Chiefs, with the number one quarterback of this era of NFL football, this new era of NFL football with Patrick Mahomes, who's a Super Bowl MVP, an NFL MVP, and already a lock in not even his fifth year to be a Hall of Famer at this point, I, I in my opinion. A guy who has helped groom him, a guy who has helped structure the entire offensive philosophy and strategy of the Kansas City Chiefs, a guy who has a Super Bowl trophy, and Eric Bieniemy cannot get a job in the NFL as a head coach. Why? I know there are people out there who are going to say he didn't have a good interview. I don't want to hear that. That's bullshit. His resume speaks for itself. I mean, if we're talking about interviews as being the reason why you won't hire a Super Bowl champion offense coordinator, because of a bad interview, then then humor me for a second. How does a guy like this get a job? This place has been kicked, it's been battered, it's been bruised, and I can sit up here and give you coach speak all day long. I can give you, uh, you know, hey, we're gonna win this many games. I can't, but none of that matters, and you guys don't wanna hear it anyway. You've had enough of that shit, so excuse my language. All right, here's what I do know. How does a guy like Dan Campbell get a fucking job as a head coach? Of this city, all right, and the city's been been down, and it found a way to get up. All right, it's found a way to uh, overcome adversity. All right, and so this team's going to be built on. Uh, we're going to kick you in the teeth. All right, and, and when you punch us back, we're going to smile at you, and when you knock us down, we're going to get up. And on the way up, we're going to bite a kneecap off. All right, and we're going to stand up, and then it's going to take two more shots to knock us down. All right, and on the way up, we're going to take your other kneecap, and we're going to get up, and then it's going to take three shots to get us down. And when we do, we're going to take another hunk out of you. Before, before long, we're going to be the last one standing. All right, that's going to be the mentality. How does a guy? With this kind of meat meathead mentality in Dan Campbell, how does he get a job? How does he get a head coaching job with a franchise that is bottom of the barrel? Bottom of the barrel. Dan Campbell. You want to know what his resume looks like? This is Dan Campbell's resume. Miami Dolphins coaching intern. 2010 tight ends coach 2011 to 2015 interim head coach 2015 new orleans saints assistant to head coach and tight ends coach 2016 2020 and in 2021 he gets a fucking head coach job for the detroit lions what has he done in the nfl to deserve his oh my god what has this guy done to deserve being an nfl head coach Coaching intern 10 years ago, the highest level he ever had was an interim head coach. Here, 
keep the seat warm while we find a real coach to fucking come take care of this team. That's what he was. Exhibit B. Nick Sirianni, head coach for the Philadelphia Eagles, an offensive coordinator for the Colts who never called plays. Sure as hell got a head coaching job. Let's go through this bullshit. Philadelphia Eagles are hiring in Indianapolis Colts offensive coordinator Nick Sirianni as their next head coach, according to ESPN. Sirianni spent the past three seasons in Indianapolis, during which time he finished twice, uh, t- team twice finished in the top 10 in yards and points. It's no coincidence the Eagles are looking for an offensive-minded coach. They're looking for an offensive-minded coach. Oh my fucking God. You gotta be fucking kidding me. <sighs> Philadelphia's focus was always on fixing the QB situation. The quarterback position was a cause for concern in Philadelphia. Starter Carson Wentz struggled with a career low 57.4% completion uh, completion rate and six yards per attempt because Carson Wentz, one, isn't very good. He was overhyped. He was overbilled. He had, he had some pretty damn good receivers when he was playing well. And now that he has a lack of talent around him, he can't perform. He can't extend plays. He makes stupid fucking throws. Jalen Hurts comes in the game and outperforms him fivefold. But they want to keep Carson Wentz. That's what the fuck they want to do in Philadelphia. Fucking idiots. He also led the NFL with 15 interceptions despite playing just 12 games. He sucks. Period. Move on. I mean, it just doesn't make any fucking sense. It just doesn't make any sense. If you're looking for a quarterback or you're looking for a head coach who is offensive minded, who has, who, who is, who is, who understands how to, how to mold and teach a player and, and groom a player to be a, a playmaker for a franchise who has championship pedigree, winning culture. How the fuck do you pass up on Eric Bieniemy, I don't care how he interviews. What is it that they're seeing about him that we haven't heard or we don't know? I mean, this is a guy who literally has every credential you could want for a head coach. I mean, this is a travesty. And I and I, I mean, I am on I'm on I'm at the border. I'm at the borderline of saying because he's black. Because this is bullshit. He's better than all of these fucks that they're hiring. Clearly a better choice. Comes from a better foundation than any of these fuckers. This dude Dan Campbell, he Come on, what has he done? This guy is just a, a, a straight meathead hire. He's a meathead. He said, we're going to kick you in the teeth. When you punch us back, we're going to smile at you. The fuck? When you knock us down, we're going to get up, and on the way up, we're going to bite a kneecap off. Motherfucker, this is not 1985. Like, this is beyond stupid. Let's take a look at this article. I mean, I just clicked on it, so why the fuck not? Eric Bieniemy still isn't an NFL coach, and every excuse and, and every excuse why falls flat. Every year around the around this time, the NFL coaching carousel winds down, and every year around this time, the league's stunning lack of diversity. I fucking agree with it. I would have never, I would have never bought into this whole di- you know diversity of NFL coach thing necessarily. In the past, but seeing this shit this year, I 100% believe it. I am fucking sold. They're not hiring black coaches because they're fucking. I don't even know why. I don't even know why. I don't know. They're not hiring them. These are guys who are, who are working their ass off the same as others. These are guys who have much deeper resumes than their competition and they can't get hired. So what? So so tell me what the fuck it is. Why aren't they getting hired? Jesus. And every year around this time, the league's stunning lack of diversity in its front-facing leadership positions rears its ugly head. 
This year is no different. Oh, we've got a bit of a respite as a general manager spot. Uh, at the general manager spot, it's two African Americans, Brad Holmes and Terry uh, Fontenot, uh, have been named general managers of the Detroit Lions and Atlanta Falcons, respectively. Thanks. We'll take the tokens. That brings the league wide total of black GMs to four. Yeah, that's still not good enough for a league that's 69% black. But the lack of diversity on the head coaching side, after everything the NFL has done to improve in this area, including the recent tweaking of the Rooney rule, this remains a flat out embarrassment. It is a fucking embarrassment. Of the six head coaching jobs that have been filled this cycle, only one, Jets hire of Robert Sala, an Arab American, uh, has gone to a minority. Uh, Houston's head coaching job is the last 2021 vacancy, so there remains an opportunity for, that black coaches won't be shut out again this cycle. The danger is definitely there, especially considering that of the 19 uh, head coaching positions filled in the past three years, one has gone to a black coach. Are you fucking kidding me? One? Man, this is bullshit. Let me share this with you guys. I don't, I'm, 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 I'm hot over here. Excuse me. This is just bullshit to me. I've been trying to like, I took 20 minutes before I even started this video to sit and just think about this and to tr just let's be rational, but there's no ration. There's no rational. There's nothing rational about this situation at all. Nothing. In three years, 19 head coaches have been hired. One of them is black. In a league where 70% of your players are black. What's more, Sala, Washington's Ron Rivera, Pittsburgh's Mike Tomlin, and Miami's Mike Flores are the league's only minority head coaches at the moment. And if you don't see a problem with that, you simply don't want to see it. Especially since prime candidate... Prime candidate, Kansas City Chiefs offense coordinator Eric Bieniemy, a black man, keeps being passed up for jobs. I mean, everybody knows what I think of Eric and what kind of head coach I think he'd be, Chiefs coach Andy Reid said Monday. Maybe the best thing I can tell you is I hope he goes to the NFC uh, when he has the opportunity. When he has the opportunity, whoever gets him, I think is a very lucky organization. I mean, he is being groomed quite literally to be a head coach by one of the greatest offensive minds in the history, arguably the history of the NFL. Andy Reid has been the engineer of some of the most prolific offenses that have ever taken the field in the NFL. And arguably right now has probably the most prolific offense of the last couple of decades in the NFL with the Kansas City Chiefs. So what the fuck is the problem with these owners who are making these decisions to hire people? How does Nick Sirianni, who has no play calling experience, how does he get a head coaching job in Philadelphia? But Eric Bieniemy, who who also is not the main play caller, but is the is the architect of the offense, uh, which Andy Reid uses. How is he not getting a job? When there are teams that are in dire need of his services. Huh. He's one of the few people that I've come across with leadership skills that, well, with the leadership skills that he has, the ability to lead men in this crazy game that we're in, and for those guys, through his leadership, to play at a Pro Bowl level, Reed continued. When he gets his hands on you, figuratively, he does wonders with athletes and he's able to maximize their abilities on the field. And he gives them the extra boost to be a productive person off the field and somebody I would have loved for my son to have played for. Huh. Eric Bieniemy has outperformed previous big name, big name Chiefs coordinators. Reed offered these words with a mix of sincerity and befuddlement joining the litany of people I've spoken to in and around the Chiefs who don't understand why Biennemi isn't a head coach yet. The fact Biennemi, who's been the Chiefs uh, offense coordinator for three years now, has interviewed for nearly a dozen jobs over that time frame and has not been hired remains absurd. He's in a pipeline position. The two men who were Chief, Chiefs OCs before him, Doug Peterson and Matt Nagy, became head coaches. Oh my God. 
<sighs> With Peterson spending three years in the job before he was hired by Philadelphia and Nagy lasting over two before he was hired by Chicago. And Nagy ain't done shit in Chicago and Peterson just got fired from uh, Philadelphia. And these guys didn't have a Super Bowl championship in Kansas City. They are big names that got signed and given head coaching positions. At the very least, you would think the would get at least the same level of interest as they did in getting hired. In the three years since Bianami took over the position, Chiefs have gone uh, combined 38 and 10 in the regular season with a Super Bowl title last season. During that time frame, the Chiefs have finished first, third, and second in offensive DVOA, according to Pro Football Outsiders. Uh, those marks are, are are all better than they finished the five years prior, which ranked from fourth to fifteenth. And yes. Much of that has to do with the maturation of Patrick Mahomes into the league's next generational quarterback. Uh, but Mahomes' rise as a starter has coincided with Bianami's guidance. Exactly what I've been saying. Uh, Mahomes destroys blitzes in part because of an understanding of the protections that Bianami specializes in and has helped him learn. Some people will point out the fact that the enemy doesn't call the plays. It shouldn't matter because the Chiefs' play calling mechanism remains the, remains the same as it was when Nagy and Peterson held the position. Reed is the primary play caller because he's an offensive genius, but the offensive coordinator chips in considerably with the formation of the game plan and assists and sometimes makes game day calls. The enemy is, one of the, is the one who speaks to Mahomes in the headset before every play, while Nagy and Peterson each had short stints where it became publicly known they were calling the Chiefs plays. They received that responsibility only because the team's offense was struggling those years and desperately needed a shakeup. Since Mahomes took over as a starter in 2018, the offense has never come close to struggling to that degree. If anything, that should be seen as a boon to the enemy's head coaching candidacy. People also conveniently forgot that Reed never called plays outright before he became a head coach either. I think that's enough. I, I think I think that's 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 enough to, to, to read into this situation uh, with Eric Bieniemy and, and why he is being continually looked over. Why is he being looked over? It doesn't make any sense. There's, I mean, you can clearly, clearly look at these this situation. And if you are a logically thinking individual, you can look at these situations and know without a doubt that this guy who has a Super Bowl championship, this guy who is who has uh, 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 helped guide and, and groom and grow the best quarterback or one of the best, if not the best quarterback in the NFL, He's, who's already been an MVP, who has been to three three straight AFC championship games now, going for a back-to-back -back Super Bowl championship. This guy is, it was, it is a huge part of that development of Patrick Mahomes. He is, he is the architect of the Kansas City Chiefs game plan week in and week out. And what, it, what better uh, 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 validation of the of those game plans and what we saw last week when they lost Patrick Mahomes. Doesn't make sense to me. I'm tired of it. I'm tired of seeing it. I mean, at the end of the day, these owners are going to do what they do, but don't sit here and act like the like we can't tell what the fuck is going on. It's clear that there is it's either Something we don't know about him personally or he's black. And they're just looking at it as, I mean, I don't even know. I don't know. Even if they were going to, even if it's, even if that's it, that he's black, he's got a Super Bowl championship. He's got the best offense in the NFL. He's got, I mean, the guys who were in the exact same positions positions as he was before before he was the coordinator, they got head coaching jobs with 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 not nearly the amount of production that he has had as a coordinator. So I don't know. 
I don't know, guys. I, I hate to be the person to pull the race card. Trust me. I don't do it. I try not to do it when I, I mean, yeah, I'm sarcastically, I sarcastically do it sometimes, but I mean, to be serious and to be, com and to be actually offended at this bullshit. Yeah, I'm pulling the fucking race card. He's a black fucking offensive coordinator in a black NFL league, and he can't get a fucking job as a head coach. That's what this shit boils down to. Yet we give guys like Matt Patricia a fucking head coaching job in Detroit, and he goes and fucking just completely shits that down the damn down his damn legs. Then they come back with Dan Campbell, who's a fucking meathead, might very well. I mean, come on. This dude does not look like head coaching fucking material at all. He's not the guy. Detroit just went and followed up one retarded ass uh, 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 hire with another one. This shit is annoying, man. It is it is frustrating to see this kind of bullshit. It really is. It is. I'm tired of the shit. I'm really tired of it. Stop being bitches. Stop being cowards. And give a man his due. Peace.